Oh yeah, I'm starting my drive to Gas Guitar Works again. It's been at least a month, probably even longer since I've been there the last time. And yeah, life's just busy and building my own guitar doesn't exactly pay the bills. So unfortunately, this is very kind of random when I'm actually able to go there. But yeah, happy to again make progress on this thing. That's exciting. I'm pretty sure I left the neck at Becca's workshop, even though I'm not 100% sure, but I couldn't find anywhere at home, so it has to be there. But yeah, uh, I'm next. actually not 100% sure what we'll be doing next. Uh, we could be working on the neck profile, I, I guess that's the thing. I also need to send down the super glue on the body as well and start working on that. So lots of uh, things to do before the instrument is actually finished. But yeah, see you at the workshop. All right, back at the workshop again. The guitar body was left in a phase, I guess you would call it, where these holes on the body have been filled. I need to send this down, uh, fix the copper shielding a little bit. As you can see, it's not perfect yet. There's some gaps going on over there. I need to fix those. Same applies to the other side of the body as well. These need to be sanded and polished. And when it comes to the neck, I'll be applying the dots here now. We're using these black MOP Mother of Pearl dots. They're kind of cool because from one angle they look like that, from other angle they're completely black. I really like how they look. And uh, there's something we noticed also. If you take a look, the spacing over here between the tuners ain't exactly even. This is something, I've, I think I was drilling this by hand. And unfortunately, this is something that can happen. And what we're going to do is, like, first of all, here are the tuners I have for this guitar. We are actually going to fill out these two holes and slightly, slightly move this hole to the right and slightly, slightly move this to the left. They still won't be like 100% even, but when we put the tuners over there and put this, I don't remember how they're called. Hello, my Apple Watch. You can see what time it is. Like, as you can see, this covers quite a lot. So there's a little bit of room to operate. So we're going to move this a tiny bit to the left and this tiny bit to the right. And it will, won't be that apparent that we've actually had to fix something here. So that's something we're going to do and once the fret markers are dried we'll be using the CNC machine to carve the neck profile and stuff like that. More on that a bit later. I started by picking the black pearl dots for the guitar. These are real mother of pearl markers which means they are made out of a real seashell and that they're not as consistent as plastic ones. So I picked the ones that are most similar looking and then proceeded to glue them to the fretboard with super glue. The CNC machine did a great job drilling the holes for the dots so the marker sit nice and tightly with just a tiny bit of super glue. Now the fretboard is ready for sanding. I also really like the pattern on the maple fretboard. I think it will pop out beautifully when we will apply some coating on it later. Next, I proceeded to work on the tuner holes. I started by drilling them with a 10mm drill and then used this tool to make sure that the tuner hole is indeed 10mm. Pekka had a 10mm thing around maple um, stick that we would use to fill the two tuner holes and I needed to make sure there's a bit of room between the stick and the headstock for the glue. Just before actually gluing this stick part to the headstock, I carefully sanded it just a tiny bit to make sure it's exactly the right size. Now that the stick is ready, it's time to cut two pieces from it. I try to get it as close to the headstock thickness as I can so I don't have to sand it that much later. And this is the part with all the cat memes about fits and sits and stuff like that. I'm using a more liquid mix, if you will, of super glue here, so it really fills out the small holes between the stick and the headstock. Super glue is pain in the butt to sand, so doing the glue part right will save me a lot of time in the future. 
Once I've applied all the glue I need, I use a super glue accelerator to speed up the dry process significantly, or basically it happens instantly. By the way, this video is definitely sponsored because Pekka is providing me his time, tools and expertise to help get my Jazzmaster ready. And I want to mention that he builds amazing high quality instruments and can pretty much fix anything on your guitar. So if you're interested, check out his website by following the link below in the description. And I should also mention that the English version of the website should be up soon. But back to working on the headstock. I next proceeded to using a saw to cut out most of the excess wood and while doing that I somehow managed to cut into my finger in a way that made it bleed quite a lot. I'm guessing the cut ended up being pretty deep because this is how my finger looks a week after this happened and it's still pretty sore but I'm doing just fine, thanks for asking. After my near-death experience, I cut out the rest of the excess wood on the headstock and sanded it level. The end result doesn't look that pretty yet, but all of this will be hidden once the tuners are actually in place. Next, we set up the CNC machine for drilling the holes for the side markers. As I've mentioned before, it takes time to align anything to the CNC machine, whether it's drilling the side markers or carving the neck or anything like that. But when you see the quality of the work the CNC machine does, it's all worth it. Now that I have the side dot holes, I start gluing them in place. I basically have this, I think it's three millimeter plastic black rod that I put in the hole and then just cut it out, obviously using super glue to attach it as well. And once they are all in place, I sand them level with a metal file. Then it was time to put the CNC machine to work one last time to carve out the neck profile. Again, aligning everything took quite a lot of time, but it was definitely worth it. We went for a fairly traditional fender style C-shaped neck, but made it a bit thicker. I've noticed that the older I get, I seem to prefer more and more thicker guitar necks, <laughs> not sure why. While the CNC machine was doing its thing, I scraped off the excess super glue from all the holes I filled on the guitar body. I basically used this razor blade with a bit of tape on the side so I don't cut into the body itself, but it gets me really close. After listening to this sound, for quite a while, I sanded down the rest of the excess glue and proceeded to fine sanding and polishing. I went all the way from 600 grit to 4000 grit sanding and applied this lamp oil, if you will, while doing it. I'm not 100% sure what this oil is called in English, so if you know, let me know. I had to be really careful here to not sand through the lacquer and, as you might have guessed, I wasn't completely successful doing that. Jumping to the studio you can see the different places where there's need for polishing the lacquer but also the spot where I sanded a bit too much. The corners of the guitar body are the spots where the cold layers stick the least and when you have to sand the body this is something that can happen. Q layers of coat and this should disappear right away and then it's time to polish the whole guitar body. I also wanted to show the quality of work the CNC machine does. The neck is definitely not smooth, but it's pretty close. The only thing it doesn't do is this neck heel shaping, so it's something I'll have to do by hand. And that's where things ended this time. It, again, I highly recommend you check out Gas Guitar Works website and their YouTube channel as well, links below in the description. If you enjoyed these videos and want to support the channel, a great way to do that is to either get my songwriting course, links below in the description for that, or use my Thoman links which are affiliate links and buy something for yourself and I get a tiny percentage of that as a commission and it won't cost you anything extra and again helps to keep things running here at Catpick Land. And for those of you who enjoy the content but haven't subscribed yet, please consider hitting the subscribe button, that would help a lot. And if you got any questions about the build or anything like that, let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. I shall see you next time.